Let's throw focus on another set of numbers. Uh, we've got Minna Industries. That's the earnings uh, under our lens right now. The group CFO, Sunil Bora, joins in on the show right now. Sunil, hi. Good morning. Good to have you on the show. As I look at your numbers, there's just one uh, black spot here. Why exactly were the margins down? Uh, with the current headwinds, some relaxation on chip shortage front has happened. But how is it that you see things moving ahead? Nathara, you are right. Uh, there has been impact because of commodity prices uh, across the globe. And obviously, we are not untouched of that impact. So, while we have uh, our customer agreements for all the price increases on a period basis, somewhere we have prices on a quarterly basis, somewhere maybe monthly or even six monthly. So, what happens is when your prices are continuously heading north, uh, which was the scenario in the last couple of quarters, while you might be getting the previous quarter average prices, as long as the spot is higher, it actually hits you negatively. So that's one reason. Another reason is obviously we know that even though if you are able to pass through that uh, commodity price impact to a customer, the higher base effect itself sort of have impact on uh, the margins. And third is also with the opening of economy, some of the normal costs you know which we are not incurring like travel, etc. Obviously, it starts gradually. So all these things put together definitely has some impact on the margins. But going forward. Uh, with the commodity prices now stabilizing, we are pretty confident that soon we should be able to climb up uh, on our margins uh, what we have delivered in the last quarter. Right, so Neil, this is Aisha joining in. Nayantara also is with me and she will surely be asking you questions. But just wanted to understand how much revenue contribution do you see happening from the EV product basket this time around? And how exactly do you see that growing considering company after company from Motown has indicated that they are going to go into EV and heavily so? Yeah, so Aisha, you know that uh, we have chalked out our own EV strategy. While you know that most of our products are agnostic to the energy which the vehicle drives on, be it EV or non-EV, be it lights, switches, lamps, on, blow molding parts, wheels, etc. So everything goes for infotainment for both IC engine as, as well as the EV engine. Now from the EV perspective, we have chalked out a very clear strategy because for us, we are seeing EV as a very, very big opportunity. And definitely, as you rightly mentioned, everybody wants to capitalize on that opportunity. So we had actually originally sort of chalked out seven key products which we were working on in terms of uh, development specifically for an EV segment, uh, for a two-wheeler or and three-wheeler, because there is a general belief that two and three-wheeler segment obviously uh, seem to be catching up faster than a BV. So we are also putting little more energy on uh, two-wheeler and three-wheeler, not to say that we are not putting our energy on BV as well. Now, from that perspective, we identified seven products. Of that, till last quarter, we had only two products which are under, uh, under production. Now, on top of that two products, we are added another three products in during this quarter, which has gone into production. So, out of seven, we have, we have now five dedicated products into production. And we have added two more, uh, which are under development. So, with all that put together, if I have to see my kit value, my existing kit value for a two-wheeler is something like 7,000 odd rupees, uh, which on an EV goes to almost like 28,000 rupees. So, we are almost quadrupling our uh, kit value per vehicle in terms of uh, two-wheeler EV segment. Now, in terms of uh, revenue, uh, we have anchored customers for almost all the products which we have been uh, working on and under production. So, at this moment, we all know that the volumes for EV are obviously very, very low. So, it might not be very significant in terms of the current revenue share, but going forward, as uh, it picks up, uh, our EV uh, revenue from specific EV products will also pick up and also from the existing products like seating, horns, and some of the other, other products we are already uh, either uh, supply to existing EVs on road or maybe in discussion with some of the specifically EV customers. So from that perspective for us, uh, EV is a win-win. Uh, and on top of it, we all know about the uh, PLI scheme. So that also provides a lot of uh, incentives on a lot of components which we manufacture, be it the existing products like sensors, controllers, etc. or maybe EV specific products. So all in all, uh, we are pretty, pretty ex very excited on uh, the EV potential. Going forward, specifically to EV components, as you know that our uh, aspiration is always to have at least 30% of the cake or the size of or the share of business. In our existing businesses, you, if you see, we are almost like more than 50% in some of our businesses across the uh, the country in terms of share of business, yeah. be it uh, switches where we are more than 60%, be it wheel where we are more than 50%, or be it uh, lamps, etc., or acoustics. So we want to uh, continue that uh, momentum to EV also. And we are pretty confident that right. in, in the coming uh, near term, we should be able to capture that kind of uh, revenue buy.
Mr. Bora, this is Nan and Tara. Good to have you on the show. I wanted to get a sense from you because of the global supply disruption, the chip shortage. It's been pretty much of a washout uh, season when you look at it uh, from the auto's perspective, right? There were very little deliveries that were taking place in comparison to the demand. Can you give us a sense of what's happening on ground? Has all of that now changed? When is normalization going to happen? Um, have orders started picking up? Have deliveries started picking up uh, to the automakers? So honestly, uh, Nayatara, we all know that the semiconductor issue has hampered businesses globally. It's not only auto, even in the non-auto, we have seen the impact. Now, coming forward specifically to auto, yes, uh, in the last quarter, we have seen a lot of OEs volumes get impacted and in turn it has direct uh, correlation with us who are direct suppliers to them which goes into the line fitment so it has a direct correlation to us so first point i want to highlight is despite that kind of impact if you see quarter on quarter we have given delivered a growth of almost 30 percent so that clearly uh, sort of demonstrate our ability to grow our business to grow our kit value to grow our components and deliver industry uh, beating growth that's number one number two to your uh, point on semiconductor shortage is it behind us answer to that definitely is no so we are uh, still grappling with uh, some of these shortages. We are uh, sort of running on month-to-month -month, uh, basis in terms of sourcing components in wherever it's available, whatever corner of the part available, and to sort of fly it uh, down to make sure that we ensure the customer line uh, continues to sort of uh, drop. And uh, based on whatever we are uh, in discussion with uh, some of suppliers and also our customers, we believe that this uh, volatility in the market in terms of uh, impact because of semiconductor shortage will go well into 2022 maybe by middle of 2022 uh, there will be some volatility in production so we are not expecting uh, suddenly a, a change in the production uh, in next quarter uh, there will be ups and downs but definitely things are little stable as of now and maybe i can say a little bit of gradual improvement or stability is sort of uh, creeping in but whether it's a stable uh, market I, I i won't say that yes there are challenges and we are working to that and it is maybe two or three quarters hence where we will uh, see a stable uh, supplies from uh, the semiconductor aspect. Okay, Mr. Bora, we're going to leave it at that. Normalization is still going to take time, but uh, we've been hearing from uh, auto ancillary companies, haven't we, about how they're revving up their EV plans. Yesterday we had Sonokoya, now you have Minda, which is doing the same.